Hi guys and welcome to this vlog update. So I'm going to get straight into it. Uh, this is going to be a very personal vlog and I wanted to put this out there because of um, accusations that have been made against me as well that I want to I want to clear. Also um, I just want to say that for the past three months tops I've been across in America. I arrived back in the UK on the 29th. It's now the 1st of November. And I was over there to film a documentary called Richard Baldwin, A Murder in Camelot. The reason for calling it that name was uh, Richard Baldwin was the best friend. Well, no, he was a very good friend of uh, Mark Richards. Mark Richards is a secret space program whistleblower. And, um, uh, Mr. Baldwin um, used to date Mark Richards' ex-wife's twin sister. So, you know, Mark Richards knew Mr. Baldwin because of the connection with his wife, Karen, and Karen's sister, twin sister, dated Mr. Baldwin. And uh, it was maybe about um, 10 months after they separated when the murder took place. So, um, very tragic. And of course, you know, I'm the only one that's gone out there to investigate on foot this documentary. So I know what I'm talking about. When people say it's false information, false flag, it's just a lot of bollocks. You got, you know, we're, I'm not going to put the evidence on here now. Uh, that will come out in the documentary. Everything's going to be released for free when the documentary comes out. So... Kerry has been on the warpath because of a number of reasons. Um, one of them is um, the guy that I'm working with as well, Jeff Reed. Now, um, she's Kerry's saying that Jeff has threatened her, and I don't. Uh, I you know I, he never threatened her uh, as a one-to-one. -one. She's just playing the victim card. But you know this is my documentary and his and the only reason Jeff's on this documentary was he brought the idea to me and of course I didn't just jump in um, fully with the idea to begin with I you know went to go see Jeff and we spent some time together and when I really researched the case myself I got to learn that there were so many red flags there it was beyond belief so out of courtesy I included Jeff in the in the documentary um, and he has helped me to research it and um, he is now going to go into the background a little bit right now because you've got to understand with Jeff he's been five years trying to get someone's attention to show that the Mark Richards story is not true and that there was a real murder that took place and that's the real cover-up that this man's memory uh, has now become uh, a secret space program whistleblowers um, wet dream in the case of uh, Mark Richards uh, because he's got nothing better to do in prison than to uh, talk about um, the crap that he's doing. So, um, and, and you see, the thing is, what I've learned in, in Kerry, Kerry Cassidy's anger is I, I honestly see an almost cult-like behaviour or disinformation behaviour. I'm not sure which. It could be insanity as a third point as well. But when you don't want to look at the evidence, uh, that someone's gathered and you're so fixated on this being true something's wrong it's 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 some it's uh, it's something's not right and 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 when people you know people are just like oh whatever Kerry says I'll always believe her um why do we get like that you see I've said this in many other videos people in Kerry's position and mine are like spiritual teachers in a sense now that doesn't mean we always get it right of course we don't right but how can you be this spiritual teacher and, and, and act like you're acting? It's completely wrong. And then I love the way as this spiritual teacher, which Kerry Cassidy is, has come now to, to, to uh, look at my background and now is looking into Jeffrey Reed and everything else. Um, I had to expect it. Um, and that's fine as well. That's fine as well because when I started this documentary, I was more than prepared, and I've told this to many people, and they can back me up on this, that I was going to lose my channel, that I was prepared to lose everything to tell the truth for Mr. Baldwin. Um, I, do I know why right now? Well, because it's the right thing that when we're being misled by spiritual teachers, that we have to take a stand. We have to take a stand. And when there's 
lots of evidence, not just a tiny little bit, but lots and lots and lots and lots and lots, then we should do something about that. And no one in my community wanted to even do anything about it. Even it was it, for most people, it's oh, I'm just a talk show host. That's not my job. Or don't show me the evidence. I wouldn't want to look at it anyway. You know, we have got to the point of insanity in this field. Absolute insanity. And uh, it's just not my path anymore. Not my path. I would rather have a bit of sanity uh, in my community. Uh, that I've been a part of for a long time. So let's get straight into it. So Kerry Cassidy has got this researcher called, let me just bring his details up, called Paul Collin, AKA Unwanted Publicity Guy. Okay. And this guy has done what he thinks is a wonderful little job on revealing my past. But Matey boy, I'm going to give you the whole story. You can sit down comfortably now and you'll be able to see some of the errors that you've made and I'm going to fill in the blanks for you as well. Now the problem is I don't want to bore everyone with the blanks of my past so I'm going to have to go through it fairly quickly, right? But um, I'll link his article below and this is my chance to, to tell you about what I used to do before I went to university in 2008, before I went to Glamorgan University. Now, just to show you some of my qualifications, I'll put them on the screen now. These are some of my qualifications from Glamorgan University. I did a degree, and most people in this field have no degree, okay? Uh, they say they worked at a film school or done some other crap, but they didn't spend three years um, putting the effort in uh, doing what I did. I, I not only got a degree, um, there's other links with the BBC down there with stuff I did. I, I got a, a late night talk show that was syndicated over 15 stations or more. And then through that syndication, it landed me a TV um, uh, output on Sky TV in the UK. This was back in 2011. This was, you know, in the early days of um, the YouTube still in some respects. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it was still, you know, cool to be on TV and stuff. Um, Okay, so what did I get up to? Um, how do I how do I bring this into some perspective? Well, I had many many companies. I um, okay, God, where do we start? So I went self-employed in two, 1999 with a company called Choice Distribution, and I had a, a business partner called John Warns. We both met in Grimsby because that's where my parents moved to after leaving Slough in the UK. So it's in Grimsby, met John Warns, and we became business partners. This is a really short cut down version of it, right? And we had a company called Choice Distribution. It distributed software. Um, John one day said to me, without putting any blame on him, he said, you know, have you ever looked, you know, I've, I've looked into the adult industry and, um, you know, th there's some good money in it if we did this as a side project to the main software that we were selling. And to begin with, I was like, oh, I don't know, should we, should we? And then in the end, I thought, ah, it could be a lot of fun. So we spent a lot of time researching the adult industry in the Netherlands because Amsterdam was very close to England and that was a legal source of content. And, um... We tried and tried to get things up and running, and you know what? It never worked out. Um, we went our separate ways, me and John did, in 2001. So when we split, I took the software company off him, paid him off for that, and I took any assets for the adult things that we've been working on as well. All right, I just want to um, jump in here as well, just to... Because I've, I've watched this vlog back and it's and I, I'm missing just some key bits here that I just want to add in. So when I split from John in 2001, um, then I moved away from Grimsby and I started living all over the place, like Lincolnshire, um, Carlisle, or different places. Um, and I moved with my then current girlfriend as well, and. In the end, uh, in 2007, we agreed to move to Holland, to Amsterdam, because I was going to try and see through the the business, the adult business in toys over there at the time. Now, when I moved to Amsterdam, um, 
unfortunately, me and my partner, well, it wasn't unfortunate, it was what it was, you know, we, we, we decided to split and, uh, oh my God, I, I just, I just, I lost it. I lost it and I, and I never saw the reason through for going to Amsterdam. So I still had the software going, but I went to Amsterdam to see through this new business, never saw it through and decided to move back to the UK. Lost a load of money from doing it. Um, but I, my head was in such a bad state after she left me that um, it was then getting on to 2008, I wanna say that I moved um, back to England, back to Carlisle. And it was when I was in Carlisle that I decided, you know what? I'm never gonna do this to myself again. I'm going to go to university, right? So this is now leading into 2008 when I went to university. So back to the, back to the block. And then in early 2008, the financial collapse was starting to come. I was running out of um, customers in the software industry because that was dying a death. Uh, the software that I was getting was, was, was harder and harder, almost impossible to get. Everything was up against me and I thought, shit, what am I gonna do? And I thought, well, I'd taken a really deep interest in Coast to Coast. I've been listening to a lot of Art Bell many years before and Alex Jones at the time. And I thought, do you know what? I would never let myself get in a situation again where I didn't have something to back up onto, where I didn't have a career to back up onto. So I decided to go to university. And prior to going to university, yes, I had had a lot of companies. Yeah, you know, I, I, it was a lot of wheeling dealing and um, it, you know, and I learned a lot from doing what I did. Basically, if you're not going to stick with one thing, don't bother seeing it through. Um, <laughs> kind of a lesson I'm trying to learn now as well. But anyway, so I went to university and I um, worked my absolute arse off compared to a lot of my classmates. Not only was I producing my own talk show, The More Show we weekly, uh, well, to a couple of weeks, something like that. You know, I was syndicating myself on as many radio stations I was doing. I was getting radio experience working at local radio stations, uh, Radio Cardiff and a few others, uh, GTFM. And I just put everything I had into this. And eventually, on my third year, I moved away from, I'd done a degree in radio and I moved away from radio in the third year to change my degree to television. Of course, that inc included journalism. So, you know, but you know, it, it, journalism wasn't something I ever thought I would use. I always, you know, my lecturers always used to say to me, you know, you're, uh, you know, journalism isn't where your heart is. You're, you, you just want to let these people talk that you interview and not question them. And, you know, she was right. <laughs> she was right. That's what I've been doing ever since until now, until now. And so then I formed a company with my partner at the time, because when I moved to the, 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 doing television, I, I met Joanna So. Joanna So is now a massive YouTuber in Malaysia. And back in the day when we was at university together, we formed a company called Rahani Productions. And we, we tried to you know monetize the more show and make it work. Of course, it never did work, but then she did work on her own stuff and she became very successful. She is to this point, she's got 1.4 million subscribers right now. Um, so, and then she, you know, it's not like this uh, field that I'm in, which is all bloody micro. So anyway, um, yeah, and fast forward when she left, I then, lots of things happened and it broke my heart when she left but to go back to Malaysia, but I know she did the right thing for her career, I know she did. And um, I was in such a bad state when she left. And I'd lost a lot of things when she left. I lost my, my home and just lots of finances that I had you know, for, for things that I was trying to get up and work and it was just terrible. Anyway, I moved back to Grinsby and, and, and hey ho, um, you know, John Warns, my old ex-business partner from 2001 was wanting to um, get things up and running. And also I should say this as well, I, I had, had companies abroad as well um, back in the day. So, and, and what Kerry's trying to, what this absolute, absolute um, idiot, um, this idiot called um, Phil Collin, um, who has done this hit piece on me, uh, it is, it, it just got so many facts wrong, we'll just go through them quickly as well. So, um, when I met John again after moving back to Grinsby, after Lee, you know, after Joanne left, um, we, we said, you know what, 
we should be doing something. We should have seen through the businesses we had before. So we decided in the end to set up a, a company to sell sex toys. It, it would, what the great thing was for me was um, I could get to move to Amsterdam, I could still do my talk show from over there and I could get some bloody decent money from another source of income. I did it all for the money and these things don't work out that way. So the universe had different plans for me because when I got to Amsterdam and we were gonna set this website up, what happened was John decided he didn't want to do it anymore and that he wanted to get into, concentrate his time into um, selling homes and renting homes. So I decided that I would stay in Amsterdam because I was committed there for at least six months with the home that I had. And that did me the world of good that I did, being in Amsterdam. Oh, outside of Amsterdam, should I say. That allowed me to come up with the idea of doing my channeling documentary. So had I not gone to Holland, I don't know if I would have come up with doing the doc idea for doing the documentary. So everything's meant to be. And you know, the universe has got its own way of moving you along if you're just trying to do things for money as well. So I've never, you know, talked about any of this, but what's happened here is this absolute numpty that works for um, Kerry Cassidy, uh, this Paul Collin investigator has got, has got the facts all wrong. I'm, if anyone anyone wants to ask me anything, they can do, and I will tell you the facts as they are, because what he's putting out about me is just not true. So let's just have a look at this 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 website. So this website that we're looking at right now is Kerry Cassidy's website. So she's put all this uh, shite uh, about uh, Richard and myself uh, by Paul Collin. Um, onto her website, onto her personal Facebook pages, onto her business page of Project Camelot, because remember, Project Camelot's a business. Why she's gone to this level to to just prove someone's innocent when the proof is overwhelming um, that he is guilty, uh, Mark Richards is guilty, and why, why she's defaming Richard Baldwin to make him out to be a paedophile, I'm, you know, it, like I say, there's a few reasons this is happening. She's either... Uh, CIA, which you know is really difficult for me to believe, but there's you know why would anyone with any logical brain go to to this extent? She's either disinformation for some other purpose, or she's actually mentally insane, thinking that the truth that she's got here is true. It, it, it's some some reason uh, what, what, what's going on here, and I'm not I'm not too sure uh, you know why she wouldn't look at my evidence and why uh, she. Um, is going to the levels that, that she's going to right now. So let me just start off and read this. So Richard Baldwin, the victim, was a known paedophile according to court records. Well, here's the thing. I've got all the official court records. I mean, forget what she's dug up online or what um, pretend things that she's put there. I've got all the court records. I went to Marin County and I brought every single fucking court record and there was no court record that Richard Baldwin was a known paedophile and I'm speaking to Ted Lindquist as well uh, to see if he'll come forward now the lead detective to say if this was ever in the investigation and I believe it absolutely was not uh, while she's she's making this stuff up it's absolutely fraudulent uh, what Paul Collin is saying and that Kerry Cassidy is supporting this new fraud. Okay, Hoover committed the murder, Hoover committed the murder while on drugs. That is entirely correct. Uh, in the court case, um, uh, Mark Richards was a drug dealer. He was freebasing cocaine marijuana with the boys, which included Crossing Hoover and Andrew Campbell. So they were all on drugs. Okay, Hoover had a prior history of being raped when Young considered as admissible in court and hidden from the psychiatrist evaluations. Absolute made up fantasy, okay? He was not raped when he was a young boy. I had this out with uh, Cross and Hoover, um, not because I knew this was gonna be said about him, but just to ask him, you know, did it ever, any of this stuff ever happen? Absolutely not. This is absolute fraud. Uh, I mean, if Crossy was here now, <laughs> he would fucking, he would, well, he would find it, he would laugh at it a little bit because he knows how crazy Mark is. Okay, both boys were in their teens and Andrew helped dispose of the body. Very little background background on him so far. Yeah, that's because you're not a fucking good researcher. I met Andrew Campbell's parents, his father and his mum. Oh, fucking hell, you idiot. And did not serve time. Mark Richard's role in... Um, Mark Richard's role 
in unclear, more to come. God, this guy's English is terrible, it's worse than mine. Okay, um, yeah, Mark Richards' rule is unclear. He dumped the body in Loch Loma. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, he dumped the body with these guys. They brought the boat together. Um, and I, I, actually, I've got, an, uh, uh, I've got an interview coming with the guy he brought the boat from. Well, the guy that was there when he brought the boat. So, <laughs> you're fucked, man. Okay, moving on. Um, but it's so compelling the way they put that. But it's like Kerry, Kerry, Kerry did the other night. She was like on her show. She was like, and we've got evidence that Mr. Baldwin was a paedophile. But I'm not saying that's the reason he should have been murdered. Who gives a... Look, at the end of the day, right? If he was a known paedophile, right? Which he was not. And it's, it, it, it means fuck all me saying that, right? Because I can't give you the evidence, right? But does that give us the right to murder someone? Right? I mean, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, right? Does it give us the right to... I mean, the courts... See, the thing is, right, if he was a known paedophile, that would have been brought up in the courts, and it was not. This, this absolute cunt, um, Paul Collins, a.k.a. unwanted publicity, publicity, publicity guy, I'm dyslexic, by the way, so I stumble sometimes, um, Wow, what a cunt to to say that about someone that it's not true. Anyway, 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 anyway. So, um, so let's scroll down. Okay, it says here, while Kevin Daniel Moore remains in the United States, whilst the federal government, especially government, especially granted a visa extending his American residency, secured by a sponsor, Albert privately having required two hundred and fifty. 50,000! Whoa! I would really adore some of that money right now. What the fuck are you on about, you absolute dickhead? I came in on a normal Esther visa. Hello? Hello? It was me that went through the Esther visa process. What, 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 it, and what is this crawl associates? What is that bollocks that you're talking about there? I'll, I'll let people read this because I don't even understand it myself completely. I, I, I think he's saying that I had a backer that backed me to... Wh where's the evidence? If you're saying this is true, where is the evidence? You release the evidence that that's true. Physical evidence, I mean, you've got to show that, you know, that, that this is true. And, and, and then you've got the evidence. I mean, what are you talking about? There is no evidence because it does not exist. What are you on about? What are you on about? Um, I, I, I don't really understand some of the things he's putting in, so I'm not going to go through. Um, cause it just doesn't make. I, I, I don't get it. I don't know what he's talking about. Um, in either mysterious events, the ruckus Kevin D. Moore has conducted boils down to his by far more secretive past involved with central banking and financial services as a corporate secretary and corporate director while simultaneously working as a low-level telemarket. No, I had many different companies doing different things. Um, yeah, so in 2003 to 2005, Kevin was a company director of secretary for ESE distributors. Yeah, it was. Um, now, it says here, involved in central banking and finance. Now, on a company, there is a SIC code, okay, and that says what the company does. I had a look back at this dissolved company, now this is from years ago, right, um, and the SIC code it's saying was Central Banking and Financial Services, but its actual main thing was uh, selling computer software, okay, and I don't know, I mean, it's trying to make me out to seem like I'm, I'm working, I've been working for the government system for a long time. Uh, yeah, 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 I think... Uh, my friends from Grinsby would have a different thing to say about that. Um, they would just laugh at this, but herein lies the problem. Some people, or a lot of people, are going to believe this because it's on Kerry's website, and the 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 the, the echelon of Kerry, uh, you know, we have to believe what she, that someone's dug up, but. It's just not true. Yes, I had uh, agency fulfillment, and it was a telemarketing company. Yes, I had ESE uh, distributors and many others, but it's 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 just bollocks. Uh, what what he's saying there about what it was for? Um, I mean, he's just going on facts. But you know, just because the Sitco said it was for that, does not mean I just I, I, does not mean that that was what it was for. You know, I mean, remember I said I had companies abroad as well. I mean, I mean, I'm not got nothing to hide. I I mean, this is. What has this got to do with Richard Baldwin? What does this have to do with Richard Baldwin? It makes no sense whatsoever. But we'll get into that. 
Uh, further facts prove that the only transparency Kevin Moore relates about his past is working at Tequila Radio at the university, yeah. So he had 32 directorships, one is currently active, and his newest directorship is More Choice Holdings Limited. Well, no, get your facts right again. More Choice Holdings Limited is dissolved. The only company I've got is More Choice Limited. You can't even get that right as in some NSA or CIA person that you are. And if you was any of these people, you wouldn't be going out publicly saying that you're an absolute fraud. It's easy to find this information if you want to go look for it. This isn't an NSA whistleblower testimony here. It's an absolute load of bollocks. More Choice Limited, a trading company with micro entity accounts where Kevin Daniel Moore's partner is Jonathan Savage Jonathan David Simon Warns. So what did I say before? Jonathan Warns was my partner back in 2001. We split and when I got back to Grinsby in 2015, after Joanna left me, we became partners again. And then he, he left that company uh, pretty soon after we joined it actually, because we just couldn't make things work. I think he left it 2016? I think, I don't know, it's on the company's house website anyway, he's not, uh, so he's saying that he's a, he's a partner and he's not, because if you look at the facts, it's just not true, it's not true. And he's listed a load of other companies here, core distribution, I think he means, he means choice distribution, the absolute dickhead. And then he's got privilege tourism, don't remember that, FY limited, FD limited, no, uh, Rahani Productions, it as an Iranian named company. You absolute fool. Do you know that Rahani Productions, do you know, my, okay, my ex was Joanna So, I'll say it to you again. She was Malaysian and she wanted, to, wanted a Malaysian word in our company. And spiritual in Malaysia means Rahani. And if Rahani means something in Iranian, she is Malaysian. She did not even think about that when we set the company up. Rahani in Malaysia means spiritual. You, well, it just goes to show how clever you are. And, um, yeah, many other directorships. Okay, we'll just scroll past that. Uh, I abruptly stopped researching when I discovered that Kevin Daniel Moore, in addition to his current trading business company partner, Jonathan, were both directors of their company. I recognize for what it actually was named Just 18 Limited. So in keeping with what many people realize by that phrase, defining a company focusing on children. I found it ironic what may have actually attached Richard Baldwin Alexander, Richard Alexandra Baldwin, who had a thing for being lured by these teenage boy defendants, according to the appeal court, that there, there may have been a far more clandestine motive for the killing of Baldwin actually being justified homicide. Okay, so basically, he, he, he very carefully, you know, linking that company name in, 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 as a paedophile company to the paedophileness of um, Mr. Baldwin. You know, okay, just 18 limited, let me tell you about this. So I spoke to John just the other day. I was like, John, did we have a company called that name? He's like, no. And I was like, I think we might have done actually. And using the site that they found my other companies on, because obviously Companies House doesn't archive companies uh, back in um, 2001. There's just no, there's no information, but this, this other company, Companies House is the website where people can go, go for the UK ownership of companies over here in the UK. Um, anyway, so I did find on this company that they've been searching on that, that name, we did have that company name. And I text John back. I said, no, 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 no. I, I think we did. And likely when he texts back, he's like, hang on a minute, that company we never used. It was dissolved back in 2000 and three or two, I'd have to look into it, I don't know when, I looked at the records. You know, basically it was an idea that we had back when we were looking at the adult stuff, we um, we didn't see it through, it was just a shell, we never used it, and it was closed. So, there's the facts on that, and there's nothing illegal about what we did there neither as well. Um, and I was 23 at the time, about that time, about 23, which, you know, is five away from five years away from being 18. So, you know, um, uh, would I have done that on hindsight, you know, done some of the things I did before? Probably not. You know, um, I, you know, the only thing I haven't got a problem right now with is the sex toys. I've got no issue with that. Uh, am I ever going to do that? Probably not. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah. It's it's jumping to conclusions here, thinking they've got something when they absolutely. And again, I'll say what the f 
fuck has any of this got to do with um, Richard Baldwin when I went to uni and retrained myself for many fucking years into a new career path? This has got nothing to do with it. And all you've done is me a favor to get this out there so that when I do eventually move away from this field and go do something completely different, that that's out there in the first place. So, Kerry's higher self, thank you very much. So, this numbnuts goes on to talk about um, stuff to do with, with why Mr. Bowen was a paedophile. And you, you know what? It actually, I, I, I've been trying to read it a number of times and I just don't get what they're saying here because this is not the court case or the retrial that I have from the official Marin County. This, this is, uh, this is, I don't know what this is to be honest that they're, that they're, they're, they're putting on here. Um, but I will just say this, when it mentions in here as well that I was escorted by the police out of the hotel, uh, no, I was escorted by the hotel security just at the very last part of my leaving the hotel and then I just walked out. Um, um, uh, I was not, there was no police. Um, no, uh, that, that is, uh, uh, well, I can, you know, I, I was there, that, you know, I can only say that, uh, but, I, but I was there. Um, yeah, you know, and, and this thing of um, me wanting Kerry's followers, you must be absolutely fucking joking that I want those crazy bastards, all right? I don't want any of that fucking audience, and I'm not doing it to get fucking famous, neither. I mean, we live, this is a micro community, all right? This is a small community. This is to stop um, the lies and, and to, to put Mr. Baldwin's name in this as well, in the Mark in the Mark Richards story, that you know Mark did take part in this murder, and he was responsible for Cross and Hoover, um, you know, stabbing and and, and blundering uh, with a baseball bat this man to death. Uh, if it hadn't been for Mark, um, Cross's life would have turned out very differently in some respects. All right, um, and he's a cult leader as well, and I I you know. And if he is being fed any information, if he is, it's complete misinformation because what better source of misinformation to use than uh, a guy that's um, you know, stuck in prison. I don't think it's anything like that at all. I think, I, 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 I don't understand Kerry's obsession with it. Don't, don't get me wrong there, I don't get that. But it's not what it, it, it pertains to be, that's what I'm saying. So I just wanted to get this out there. I mean, all I want to do is really get on with editing this documentary docu-series. I think, you know, I've got so much to edit right now. Um, but I would rather have the truth out there about my past. Um, and that's a very kind of, you know, compact, compacted thing because I just, you know, what we are, what we are now, we're on almost 30 minutes and, and it's, it's just, you know, um, it's just not that important. If you if you want to do a smear campaign that's true, uh, you need to get your facts right first, love. Okay. Um, also, uh, this has got I say again, fuck all to do with uh, Mr. Baldwin. I bet you've got a fucking past as well, Kerry, and I bet you wouldn't be one percent as honest as I've been right now about my past. And I bet a lot of you out there as well watching this would not be as honest about your past. Um, it's not an easy thing to do, you know, we've all been in our 20s, we've all made mistakes and we've all done things that we regret as well, probably beyond 20, I know sometimes I keep doing things I regret sometimes, but you know, this is part of having a human existence, okay? Um, isn't it a great thing to do to smear the, the guy that's trying to get the truth out there? You stupid bastards, it's not going to work. And I want anyone that's got any questions for me, I will answer them, whether a video response or in writing. Uh, no problem doing that whatsoever, all right? So, um, good luck with your bullshit. And um, I know a lot of people are gonna listen to you and believe you, and that's fine. That is also fine as well. I can do nothing about that. All I can do is present my side as well. So, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you soon. Take care.